baby. What is up, Thunder Maniacs? It is I, Terry Marshall, in the audio, baby. Hey, y'all, welcome to the Thunder Lips episode. Uh, right after our go home show before Retro Mania. Uh, really good show. We are not only going to Retro Mania, but we are getting the finals of the Sex Cup, baby. Uh, Sex Cup, man, had a lot of hype coming into it. I feel like as the tournament is going along, it's kind of petered out as some of the names that a lot of people recognized have fallen out. Uh, you know, it seems like people don't talk about it as much, but let me tell you something. Uh, these four teams that were in the semifinals, man, uh, they gave it their all. They all tried really hard throughout the tournament. They all put up great work, and it was not an easy call. But we're not talking about that stuff first. We're going to get to that. We're going to go over the show in order as per usual. So the show kicks off, open it up with a segment. Alexander Marshall's in his temporary office, which is Terry Marshall's full-time office. You know, brother's going to share. Brother's going to share. Sharing is caring. Uh, Alexander Marshall in the office doing paperwork because that's what people in charge do is lots of paperwork, apparently. you got to look official. you got to look busy, Right. The door burst open, and in comes Cat Jones, representative of CCPE. She is very upset that Chris Page uh, lost his title, and she wants Chris Page to have a rematch. Alexander Marshall Hay informs her, look, uh, there's no rematch clauses in the contracts this year, as we found out with Peter Vaughn. Uh, seems to be a thorn in the side of good old CCPE, the not reading the fine print and seeing there's no rematch clauses. So Cat Jones is very upset talking about they're going to file an injunction. With this injunction, that means that all CCPE contracted talent would have to sit out of Thunder Pro events. Uh, and that means Peter Vaughn would have to sit out and not have a match with Terry Marshall. Alexander Marshall knows how bad his brother wants revenge, knows how big of a match this is. And he knows how much CCPE talent he has floating around Thunder Pro Wrestling. So he gives in. He says, fine. You want Chris Page in the match? We'll put Chris Page in the match. But there is a caveat. Not to be confused with caviar. No fish eggs in this match. The caveat is, it's a three-way. We got Larry Tack, Marcus... uh, It's kind of like, uh, Marcus's last name's kind of like uh, with your sister sauce, Worcestershire sauce. You just say it really fast. People won't know if you messed it up or not. So we got Chris Page will be in the match, along with Marcus Kadarian and Larry Tact in a three-way dance. Or, as Joey Styles used to say, in a three-way dance. But... There's an even more added caveat. A caveat on top of a caveat. An inception of caveats. It's going to be a cage match. Making sure that Buster Gloves does not stick his nose in the match. Making sure that no one from the Seven Deadly Sins sticks their nose in the match. Making sure that no one from CCPE sticks their nose in the match. It's going to be not just... The old mesh cage. No, 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 brothers. This is Retromania. Do you think we're going to have Chain Link in our cage mats? No way, dude. That doesn't work for me, brother. We're bringing back the big blue bars. Nothing like having blue bars. <laughs> so, set that up. Main event of Retromania. Huge changes, huge main event, going to be spectacular. After that, we have the opening uh, video package of the show, the seeing the signs, the obligatory welcome from the announcers. 
And then we get things started off hot. That's right. Friday Night Fury coming in hot just like the fajita. As uh, Ruby Ramirez takes on Cassandra Irvin. And a double debut match. Both, both these talent making their in-ring debuts for Thunder Pro Wrestling. Had five people making their in-ring debuts for Thunder Pro Wrestling on this show. Uh, Ruby Ramirez no-showed in Cassandra Irvin won very easily. Um, uh, I mean, I was kind of surprised Ruby Ramirez no-showed. They signed up and posted character development role play on Easter Day. I mean, if you're taking your time out to do this on Easter, I'm going to assume you might be kind of interested in being part of it, but they no-showed. Okay, Sarah, Sarah, Ruby Ramirez, you will be automatically booked for the next Friday Night Fury if you're listening to this. Uh, even if you're not listening to this, you're still going to automatically be booked for the next Friday Night Fury. Uh, if you don't show, you'll be moved off the roster. Uh, but anyway, hey, it is what it is. You never know what happened. You're going to have your chance to redeem yourself. Then we had a segment uh, that a lot of people were looking forward to. We had TLS's The Lost Soul segment. He's introducing his good, close, personal friend. And it's a three-letter name. Starts with a P and ends with a C. And everybody thought it was Pick. But not so fast, my friend. Swerve, bro. It's Puck. The pimp under control. Uh, I personally thought this was hilarious. I knew that they were going to do this uh, a long time ago. But, you know, TLS has been teasing that Pick was coming. Uh, Pick was even playing into it being, you know, dropping some very, you know, clear hints of Thunder Pro Wrestling. Uh, but they, it wasn't Pick, it was Puck. Uh, I gotta say, I thought it was hilarious. Uh, I couldn't get the picture to work, but they sent me a Hornswoggle dressed up like AJ Styles, so I had to find a different picture of Hornswoggle dressed up like AJ Styles. Uh, <laughs> Bobby is my favorite kind of, or Bobby TLS is my favorite kind of troll. Uh, he's a very fun, fun dude, you know, he'll mess with people, but he's not malicious about it. Uh, He's a good dude to have around. I'm glad he's here. I, and honestly, I just, it just cracked me up seeing this thing. Um, it's a definitely a fun way to start this show. Uh, definitely classic TLS, playing mind games with people. Uh, after that, we had another debut match as Davis Starfire made his Thunder Pro Wrestling debut against Mudmouth, getting back in the ring after uh, a little time off from in-ring action. Uh, been a little, couple shows since Mudmouth got a match. Uh, he's been dropping some angles, not some angles, some segments, uh, doing some character development work. I can tell you, it paid off. Mudmouth walked away with the win. Uh, Mudmouth is, you know, he's shown great growth every time he's put up a role play. It's been better than the role play before that. Is he at the top yet? No. But is he showing great potential? Absolutely. Uh, Mudmouth is going to be one of those guys that I think if he sticks around and toughs it out, I think he's be, going to be one of those guys that you see grow into a top talent of a Fed that's going to be kind of like a homegrown type talent. Now, I'm sure, you know, I don't know if Mudmouth has had experience before he was in Thunder Pro, but uh, he is definitely growing in Thunder Pro. Uh, doing a great job. He's getting better. Uh, definitely did a lot better at work. Uh, you know, on his character development, his story. There's a couple things in that that you can improve upon. I mean, there's always room for improvement. Uh, if you want to know, you want some feedback on how you're doing, obviously hit me up. Uh, let's not make this all about Mudmouth because David Starfire, uh, he definitely put out a solid role play as well. Uh, you know, you just got to learn the, I know the handler of David Starfire, I'm familiar with his work from another Fed, and that other Fed style is different. Thunder Pro Wrestling's. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's different. Because there's different strokes for different folks. There's different genres of music, different types of wrestling, different types of e uh, different types of fruit. Uh, there's whatever. A variety of spice of life. Uh, anyways, uh, David Starfire, man, he did good. You know, it wasn't terrible. There's definitely room for uh, improvement. You just got to get used to the Thunder Pro. Uh, style Thunder Pro is not unto itself a certain style. It's just the style that I learned from 
you know, got to enjoy places like GCWA, uh, OCW. Uh, I know there was an I, ICWF was, you know, just like those. Uh, I don't remember being an ICWF, honestly, but a lot of people are in OCW and GCWA. And even a guy that's in Thunder Pro right now ran ICWF, uh, Cholo, uh, the Malvados, good old Doug, whatever name you know him by, Xavier Lux, Marcus Kadir, uh, whichever one you know him by, he ran the ICWF. So, you know, they're all in the kind of same vein. That's just the style that we're into, you know, the story matters, creativity, originality. That's what is key. Uh, and, you know, you really get something creative, story, a lot of original ones. It's going to help you out. Uh, I'll go ahead and tell people right now, because both Mudmouth and David Starfire had this in their role play. Uh, David Starfire was really centered around this. I absolutely hate a gym setting for a role play. It's just so generic and unoriginal. Like, and if you give me a role play where your character's punching a punching bag, I want to take a nap. Uh, it's just so overdone, you know, like... We can get outside of the box, more than that. that's what Thunder Force about. Like getting out of the box, having fun. Uh, Lisa Angelo, her role play, man, she gave me the gym, hit the punching bag as well. And don't get me wrong, it's her first time here. It's, it broke to a good role play, but it's just uh, it's, it's open up our minds and expand that box, you know what I mean? Let's do something crazy. Uh, in the words of workaholics, let's get weird. All right, so, anyways, I digress. After Mudmouth and Davis Starfire, we had a segment from a new face for Thunder Pro Wrestling. Uh, I'm 100% sure I'm going to butcher this name. Uh, Toussaint? Toussaint, uh, our Haitian character. Uh, we'll just say our Haitian character with the uh, our truth pick base. Uh, I know the handler of this character. Uh, I do believe this is a brand new character for them. Uh, they are a very good writer. Uh, so we're going to see how this new character is for them, how they do. I'm sure they'll be looking to make their debut with the ne- in-ring debut with the next uh, Friday Night Fury, schedule permitting. But uh, I'm interested to see how this character goes for them. Nice segment here. Just give me a little background about the character, let you know who the character is, uh, you know, their history. So it's going to be interesting to see how it does for them. Uh, I think it'll work out pretty good. After that, though, we went to 999 versus uh, the next in. Actually, these are entering debuts for both these people. 999 and Alicia Angelo uh, made their entering debuts. Uh, 999's role play was very good. Uh, did a really good job of painting a picture, a very uh, you know original type character. Uh, I really enjoyed it, you know, the way they wrote it, seemed original, seemed different, uh, creative, so very good, uh, obviously, you know, by the way, I'm putting that over, uh, 999 won the match, but I don't know what you think, it'll, I didn't like Alicia Angelo's role play either, uh, you know, they asked me for a bank, I gave it to them, I think they're going to grow and develop as well, they obviously have a very strong foundation of writing, game, role playing, I just learned in the Thunder Pro style, you know, opening up that box, uh, you know, expanding everything. I think they're going to do it. I think they're going to do a great job. They had a great idea, you know, for the story and the settings of their characters. So I have no doubt in my mind that Lisa Angelo and uh, the team of Lights Out is just going to continue to grow and expand and get better with every role play. So looking forward to seeing that and seeing how it does. Uh, after that, we had... Colt Maximum segment. The Colt Maximum segment led into another segment. Uh, Colton comes out to say, this mystery man, this ominous voice, he's been dropping little hints, dropping little clues since Thunder, since Thunder in Paradise 2. Uh, I've challenged this mystery person to a match. Uh, are you going to accept or not? Like You've had, and this is the second show since I challenged you, are you going to officially accept this match now? Last Friday Night Fury, you came out, you beat around the bush, but you didn't say yay or nay. So are you a coward, or are you going to fight me? And then, uh, you know, Colton Maximus leaving. The ominous voice speaks again. Lights go out. 
spooky, spooky, creepy, creepy special effects. And lights come back on and the mystery man is in the ring behind Colt Maxim. Like any good baby face, he just can't seem to hear or understand the fans telling him that there's somebody behind you. And blammo, he gets blasted. The mystery man drops him. And the mystery man is revealed to be Z. The mystery man accepts, well, not the mystery man anymore. Z accepts the match, says, I'll see you at Retromania. And I'm going to carve you up with that cowbell in this bull rope match. Now, for you, those of you who aren't familiar with Z, uh, Z's a very good writer. I actually reached out to him before Thunder in Paradise. Like when Thunder Pro was getting started, say, hey, Z, I see that, uh, you know, you're not currently in a Fed right now. Just wondering if you may be interested in coming in. And we've been building this, uh, you know, this debut slowly. Uh, well, he's also getting everything sorted out to get to get back into things. Um you guys aren't familiar with Z, I know Z mostly from GCWA and WWH. Uh, the Lord Z, uh, he's a good role player, man. He's going to fit in good in Thunder Pro Wrestling. Uh, I think he's going to be a great addition to the roster. I'm really interested in seeing how him and Colt Maxim's match go. Now, Z going to have some rust. But he's going to have to knock off the hard way by Colt Maxim, knock him in the head with that bull rope. Or is he going to come in... Not from retirement, but from a metamorphosis. And smash Colt Maxim. We're going to see. That's going to be an interesting match. Personally, love bull rope matches. So, we'll see how it goes. Now, after that, there's probably a commercial break, honestly. But then after that, we had the first semifinal match of the Sex Cup. The Dreamweavers and the Gangsters of so should I say, the dream weavers, I believe we can make it through the tournament. Don't want to get hit with another uh, copyright infringement like we did last time. But anyways, the dream weavers and the gangsters of Christ. Who's going to go on to the finals of the Sex Cup? And unfortunately, it looks like the dream is over. The gangsters of Christ prove that they are in a very solid tag team. They are the IIW tag team champions, so obviously they are a very solid tag team. Uh, they've won three big matches in this tournament. You know, they beat the Manhattan Project, who was a lot of people's pick to win this tournament. Uh, you know, Fook and Hoot is no easy task to defeat, but they did it. Uh, now they're moving on to face the Malvados. Uh, I'll be honest, man, the Dreamweavers had become like my... Cinderella story, like underdog team, but the Gangsters of Christ, they came out and pulled it out. Uh, this match was super close. Uh, I consulted three other people about this match to, uh, to finally get the winner. Uh, I will say, I do think it was the weakest role play that both teams put up in the entire tournament. Uh, but man, it was still, they weren't bad role plays at all, and it was super close, super tough to call. Uh, and after the match, after the Gangsters of Christ won through interference by old Poppy Dawson, or should I say, I'm sure they don't say Poppy, I'm sure they say Pappy Dawson. Uh, Gangsters of Christ won. Junko got cheated. After the match, Brooke Blakely picking up her partner. We think she's going to console her, but instead she's mad that she lost the match, and Brooke Blakely turns on Junko. The dream turns into a nightmare. It's a wake-up call. The dream is over. It broke my heart. I even had to write in a little girl crying, looking at her daddy, saying, why? Why? Because I was not ready for this team to end. And it saddened me to know that they wanted to set up an angle and work with each other and end the team. I was hoping they'd stick around as a team, even if not in the tournament. But it's not how the cookie crumbles, unfortunately. And even though the dream may be over, that means we now get Brooke Blakely taking on Junko. And that's going to be very interesting. So, after the Dreamweavers broke the hearts of all the little Thunder Maniacs, well, the Dreamweavers didn't break the hearts of all the little Thunder Maniacs, Brooke Blakely broke the hearts of all the little Thunder Maniacs. 
by ruining the Cinderella team, Brooke Blakely decided she didn't want to be the Cinderella story. She wanted to be the evil step witch. But after that, we had Peter Vaughn showing up to the arena. Peter Vaughn had uh, is suspended from the arena, but Alexander Marshall in charge. He did say Peter Vaughn does have to show up and sign his contract for his Retromania match. And that Peter Vaughn would be escorted throughout the arena by security the entire time. Peter Vaughn is forced to leave his wrench outside. But hey, he thinks he's fine. Like he don't have anything to worry about. He's just going to Terry Marshall's office. What's the worst that can happen? So he goes into Terry Marshall's office to sign his contract. And then the door shuts. Security leaves him in there, I should say. Security leaves the room. Uh, this reminded me of like something you'd see in like Mayor of Kingstown. Uh, of the prison guard setting somebody up to get a beating uh, because Cannon Gunner leaves, uh, you know, leaves the office, shuts the door, and there's Terry Marshall with a steel chair. Terry Marshall gets a measure of revenge, busting Peter Vaughn open, tackling him over a desk, hitting him with a trophy. Peter Vaughn wanted to go to Terry Marshall's house, wanted to get Terry Marshall's family involved. You know, before, it was personal. You know, Terry Marshall was busted open, beaten down. And Terry Marshall was mad. But then, Peter Vaughn had to get Marshall's family involved. And that would leave Marshall pissed off. So Terry Marshall is ready to put Peter Vaughn down, put Peter Vaughn out. The contract still had to be signed. Terry Marshall uses Peter Vaughn's blood to sign the contract. Now, if that's not a blood feud, I don't know what is. I mean, we're signing contracts in blood here, people. That's got to be a blood feud, right? A little swig of the protein shake for the working man there. All right, so after that, we got a segment by Aaron Warthog. He's hyping up his match. You know, Aaron Warthog is a perennial loser, but hey, he's making a comeback, man. He's got things in mind that he's going to do, and that's becoming the first prestige champion. Let us know, hey, I'm looking for in that belt. And you know what? I'm glad to see old Bobby Bones getting a little bit of love. Nobody ever uses... Bobby Bones. Everybody always wanted to use Sandy Marshall. Give Bobby Bones a little little love here, people. Happy to see it. After that, we got another backstage interview. Back to back. We got backstage inter- We got two backstage interviews for a reason. So we can have back to back backstage interview segments, right? Right? Anyways, uh, we have Sandy Marshall this time because hey, obviously, Bobby Bones is already being used. He's talking to Warthog. But we got Sandy Marshall talking to Alice Knight and C.J. O'Donnell, talking about the TLS Stranger, talking about the Perfect Strangers match. And up next, their five-way scrimmage match. How TLS is going to get a hurting for certain. And C.J. O'Donnell's going to get a measure of revenge when he takes care of TLS and his scramble match. And speaking of the scramble match, that was right after this. Five-way scramble match now. Uh, only three of the five people role-played, but it was very close. Uh, I reached out to Trisha Slater. I said, hey, man, forget you had a match? He said, yes, I did forget that I had a match. I apologize. So no big deal there. Uh, Clyde Newton, you know, he told me that he wanted to stick around. So I said, okay, I'll put you on the next card. i put him in the card. Even talked to him and said, hey, man, just to remind you, I'll put you in the card as you asked. You know, hey, cool. Uh, but then he just no-showed. He just, there, no explanation, no nothing. Not really sure what happened there. You know, if you don't want to do it, you could have just told me. Uh, but, you know, hey, maybe something came out, so I don't want to jump to conclusions. Uh, but Cloud Newton, uh, we do wish him the best in his future endeavors, whatever those may be. Uh, but he has been removed from the Thunder Pro roster. 
Uh, but these three role plays, um, and it was a very close match. I went back on who won, back and forth on who won this thing, five or six times. Um, you know, there were parts that I liked about all three role plays. There were parts I didn't like about all three role plays. I consulted a couple outside uh, people, and we came to the conclusion that TLS won. Uh, super close match. Tried to write it kind of super. Tried to write it close. Tried to write it fast paced. Uh, but in the end, the lost soul was the one picking up the dub, pinning Clyde Newton on his way out. Hey, big things there, big win. Right there for the lost stranger. Another swig of the protein shake for the muscle man. Uh, so, hey, big win for TLS. A lot of momentum heading in to Retromania. Speaking of a lot of momentum heading into Retromania... We got our last semifinals match of the Sex Cup up next. But first, we get a little bit of words from Larry Tack. Larry Tack letting us know he's not worried about the three-way. Letting us know he doesn't need Buster Gloves to watch his back. That he won the title fair and square and happily defended. That for too long, Chris Page and Peter Vaughn plagued. Thunder Pro Wrestling, it's time for a new era, a new chapter. The era of Larry Tack. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens. We got the Malvados coming out uh, with a very special holiday entrance. Uh, <laughs> I love this. Uh, Doug told me he had a special entrance for the Malvados. Uh, and, you know, I was thinking, well, obviously it's not going to be Cinco de Mayo because he specifically says that these guys are not Mexican. And then when we get May, Revenge of the Fifth, uh, May the Fourth, Star Wars. I popped super big. I love Star Wars. Uh, seen all the movies. Watch, trying to catch up on all the shows. I ain't, brother ain't got time for all that. Uh, but I love Star Wars, man. So I really popped for that. Buster Gloves coming out. We have a really good tag match. Uh, I say it was a really good tag match uh, because I wrote it and I want to pat myself on the back like I'm Barry Horowitz. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But anyways, uh, I personally thought it was a good match. The role plays were pretty close. Um, it wasn't the closest match on the card. I'll say that, but it was pretty close. Um, you know, critical hit. You know, they're kind of redeeming themselves in this tournament. Uh, but, I mean, Malvado's on a roll, man. Call them butter because they're on a roll. Um, they picked up the dub. Had a little post-match brawl because of the shenanigans that ended the match, you know. Uh, got some lightsabers involved. Larry Tack was upset about that. So... He's having some words with the Malvados. And then, you know, Buster Gloves are going to break into a brawl. They break into a brawl. Not getting ready to. They do break into a big brawl. Chris Page, you know, tries to stop a chair shot. Marcus thinks Chris Page is going to use a chair. Marcus stops Chris Page from using the chair. And we have ourselves a little Mexican standoff. That's what it's called, people. A Mexican standoff. Don't cancel me, bro. And how very fitting that we have this Mexican standoff to end the Friday Night Fury Cinco de Mayo show. Uh, really, we didn't do anything for Cinco de Mayo because, I mean, let's be honest, I don't even think Mexican people celebrate Cinco de Mayo unless they're in a restaurant and got all the crazy white people in there uh, thinking they're doing something. Um, but anyways, the credits rolled. <laughs> you thought it was time to go home. But lucky you who stayed around to the very end because we had a little Marvel movie style post credits segment. And we got Greg the Handyman. Been hard at work with that phone booth he borrowed, that Terry Marshall borrowed from Tristan Slater. Maybe that's why Tristan Slater couldn't make it to the role play because he didn't have his phone booth to get there. Uh, but Greg the Handyman is ratchet strapping phone booth to the top of the Thunderdome. Terry Marshall, he's still there. He's got all the talent locked in the building. They're like, hey, what, what's going on here? Why can't we leave? He's saying, bear with me, brothers. Uh, dial up the phone booth and the entire Thunderdome is brought back to 1989 because Retromania is coming up. That's our next show, May 19th. What a stacked card we got for Retro Mania. Uh, it's going to be good. I, you know, Thunder in Paradise, 
two was pretty big, but man, this is kind of blowing it out of the water, if I'm being honest. We got some killer matches on here. Uh, cards different than what I would have originally envisioned when I started thinking about Retromania, but it's a great card, let's be honest. Um, and it's set in 1989. You know, I made an announcement about this. Uh, if anybody's confused, I'll go ahead and explain. So I would like for your role plays to include that you have time traveled to 1989. Dramatic pause while we take a swig of the protein shake for the working man. All right, so I would like for it to include that you have been transported back to 1989. Now, I had a couple people hit me up and say, but what if my character wasn't born in 1989? Well, it's like back to the future. All right? You go back in time as your current self, your current age, your current self, just like when Marty McFly went back and his mom tried to hook up with him and thought his name was Calvin Klein. Uh, back to the future's awesome. Uh, so anyways that's what it's like so you go back at your current state age everything like that you're just back in 1989 now i've had other people say hey uh i already started my role play well you shouldn't work ahead of the class is what i should say but i'm not saying that uh, i get that man sometimes you gotta you gotta stay ahead of the curve when you got a busy schedule so no problem with that at all so here's the deal if you do not include uh first of all junko as i stated she he, was quick on the draw most of the role play uh, before this was explained also she thought I misspelled her match and it was a risk or reward match instead of a Rick or reward match but that's fine I say her uh, but whatever yeah anyways uh, so that's fine if you don't role play with the time travel gimmick you're not going to automatically lose uh, you know some people have stories like J.C. Phoenix and Nova Sky, where being back in time doesn't fit into their story. So I can kind of get that and make an exception for that. Uh, and you're, like I said, if you just choose not to participate in the time travel aspect, you're not going to automatically lose. All right? Uh, now, I may count a couple points off. You know, like, if your story's not keeping you from doing it, it's going to be a little bit of a letdown that you didn't participate. But I get it. You're not going to automatically lose. I might hold it against you. Uh, personally, not RPing ones. I'll personally hold it against you that you didn't play along with my fantasy and our fantasy game. Our fantasies should line up. I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm not going to personally hold anything against you. It's just a game. Uh, but yeah, you know, we'll kind of make count against you in your role plays unless you know, you've already reached out to me and said, hey, uh, you know, blah, 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 this doesn't work with my story. I get it. Uh, not a big deal. Just have fun, guys. It's all about having fun. Like, it's not the end of the world, it's just a game. Uh, so, that's what's going on with Retromania. We have went back to the Charlotte Coliseum in 1989. Now, let's go ahead and look at the card for Retromania. Because, brother, it is stacked. We're going to crown... This is in no particular order. Uh, we're going to crown our first ever prestige champion. Uh, we tried to crown it last year. and uh, TPW closed for season one before we got to crown it. Uh, but this year... We are going to crown it, and it's going to happen in Retromania. We got J.C. Phoenix and Aaron Warthog uh, battling out to see who's going to be the first prestige champion. That's going to be a great, great match right there, man. Um, we also have the Perfect Strangers match. Let me go ahead and explain these matches real quick that need explaining. So the Perfect Strangers match. The Lost Soul for a little bit went by the Lost Stranger used to wear a mask he wore a mask for a very long time until he was revealed his face and had the Keanu Reeves look he wore like a Rorschach mask for a long time his thick base for a long time so the TLS mask will be hanging from above the ring it's going to be like a ladder match you got to climb the ladder and get the mask. But then you have to take said mask and put it on your opponent's head. So you might be able to climb the ladder and get the mask, but then you got to be able to put it on your opponent's head. Are they going to be able to do that? 
You know, so the guy that gets the mask might not be able to put it on his opponent's head. His opponent might just kick his butt and put it on his mask. Like, hey, thanks for doing all the work, climbing that ladder. Uh, but now that you got it down, I'm just going to take the mask and put it on your head. We'll see how it works out. And whoever loses this match has to be the servant of the winner until the next pay-per-view, which is Bohemian Bash in July. So uh, life can be pretty miserable for whoever loses this match for a couple of months. Uh, now we'll go ahead and explain the other match that needs explaining, and that's our Rick or Reward match. That's right, Rick, not Risk. So this is basically a four corners match. In the corners, there's boxes. In one of the boxes is a contract saying that you are the number one contender to the American Championship. And the other three boxes are kind of like gag prizes that will be relevant to the time period. So, you may have like a gift certificate to Rax or, uh, you know, a, a Walkman or something like that. Uh, so, what's going to happen is whenever you open up the box and it's not the contract, the American Championship, you're going to get Rick Rolled. Uh, Chris Page. This would be a great place to put in. Never going to give you up. Never going to say goodbye. Uh, so, that's what's going to happen. You're going to get Rick Rolled, but not opening up the right box. Rick Astley, 80s. You got it. You got it. You got it. Yeah, right? Super popular. Super synonymous, as they would say. So, that's three of the many matches that we're going to have at Retro Mania. Let's go and talk about another one. Uh, we're retro here, bro. We're in 1989. Uh, so, now, before you say, we're having a ladder match in 1989. Calgary was having ladder matches in the 70s. So, anyways. Uh, we're going to have a Texas bull rope match between Colton Maxim and... Lord Z. I don't know if he's going by Lord Z or if he's just going to be Z. Uh, Texas Bull Rope matches used to be touch all four corners. Uh, I love Texas Bull Rope matches, but that can be pretty boring. You have to go around and touch all four corners. So we're just going to do it to a pinfall. Uh, you're connecting at the wrist with the big thick rope, and in the middle of that is a giant bell. Those bells are made of steel. And uh, the corners normally tend to be pretty sharp, or at least they always were when someone was slicing Dusty Rhodes' head open with it. So, we're going to have ourselves a good old-fashioned Texas bull rope match. So then, another big match for this show. We've got Peter Vaughn and myself, Terry Marshall. Thunder and Terry Marshall. Uh, this thing has been building since the end of Thunder and Paradise 2. Uh, a lot of these matches have been built since Thunder and Paradise 2, honestly. Uh, I mean, that's why Retrovania feels so much bigger than Thunder and Paradise 2 because it had. It seems like it's had more build, even though you know there's plenty of build for Thunder and Paradise 2, but Thunder and Paradise 2 was our first big show back, our first pay-per-view after reopening for Season 2. Uh... I mean, there's plenty of shows to build up to it, but it just feels like Retromania is bigger. Maybe because you still have stuff that was happening before Thunder in Paradise 2. Um, who knows how big our next show is going to be after this. I think uh, it's still going to be big. You know, Bohemian Bash is coming up next. Uh, you'll start hearing stuff about that after Retromania. But Retromania has just got like a really big, big card feel to it. Like, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that it has like a Wrestlemania feel to it, but it definitely has like a... SummerSlam, you know, type feel to it. Like, it's got a definitely big match feel, but it's a big match card. I mean, look at the people on this card, man. It's stacked from top to bottom with talent that could, you know, be at the top of any promotion. Uh, so, you've got Peter Vaughn and Ricky Stanton. Uh, or Peter Vaughn and Ricky Stanton. Uh, Peter Vaughn and Terry Marshall taking on each other. Uh, this could be a big story match. We've got a story that's coming up out of this. I just want you guys to sit back and enjoy the story. Sit back and enjoy the ride. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, it's definitely a blood for you right here, man. So we're going to see uh, how this Texas death match 
works, uh, so if you guys don't know how Texas Deathmatch works, you have to pin your opponent. Then your opponent has until the count of 10 to get up. If your can't, opponent can't answer the 10 count, you win. That's the only way to win. Uh, pin your opponent, then they can't answer the 10 count. Um, you know, it's count, pinfalls count anywhere, anything goes, all that, you know. Uh, so it's definitely going to be big. It's definitely got an old school retro feel to it. Uh, so that's going to be a big one. We've got Nova Sky and Ricky Stanton. I know I was talking about Ricky Stanton earlier. Uh, I've, this is the, <laughs> the, the third time I've sit down to record this show. I got to do it in parts. I've uh, been really busy lately. Uh, so I may have already covered this match. And if so, uh, well, you're just going to get this, a second dosing of it and see if what I said is still how I feel. Uh, but anyways, we got Ricky Stanton and Nova Sky. Uh, this will be a big, big match too. American Championship, that's our Intercontinental Championship, as most people look at it. Intercontinental, United States, whichever I see is always going to be the number two belt to me. Uh, but, you know, you got Ricky Stanton, pretty Ricky Stanton. And Nova Sky. Uh, Nova Sky has been embroiled in a big feud with J.C. Phoenix. Um, if I knew everything that they were going to do in this feud, I would have put them in a match for this pay-per-view for Retromania. Uh, but, you know, when they started telling me the stuff they were going to do, I told them, I said, hey, uh, if I'd known, I would have put you guys in the match. I said, don't worry. Uh, the angle doesn't need us to have that match here. So... We're going to see how this plays out. It's been really interesting. Uh, it's definitely different. You know, there's some, you know, we got pyromancers in here. We got some necromancy. We got all kinds of crazy stuff going on. But, hey, I'm here for it. You know, I want you guys to have fun and be creative. And they are certainly being creative. Uh, I thought we were going to get a little out though. Big boss man pepper action with Charlie in it. Swerved me, bro. Uh, big twist there. It's completely different. Uh, I've definitely been entertaining. You know, it's not like sitting down reading somebody in the gym kind of promo. Uh, it's different. It's been really entertaining. Uh, I'm interested to see where this goes as it keeps developing. You know, uh, Nova Sky, uh, last time I saw her, she was in a basement. Been tortured by Master Fry and JC Phoenix, so... You know, hopefully they figured out a, she figures out a way to get back in time for this match. Well, hopefully she gets free uh, and isn't tortured anymore and is still alive. Then hopefully she figures out how to get back in time and defend her American Championship. But, uh, spoiler alert, this is fantasy, so she probably will. Uh, so, Ricky Stanton, uh, Nova Sky, going to be a big, big match there. Ricky Stanton is, you know... Has done what he can to stay in this angle as far as you know, commentating, cutting promos, answering challenges. Uh, so I'm looking forward to it. I know both these people are going to bring their A game and try to walk away with the American Championship. Then, another huge match. It's the finals of the Six Cup! Bum, 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 wow, wow. Those are my horn sound effects. Uh, we've got the Malvados, who are the reigning, defending. Uh, I can't talk to you. Reigning defending duos champions. Uh, and they're taking on the Gangsters of Christ. The Gangsters of Christ have battled their way through some tough teams. They get to the finals, you know, Fook and Hoot, Manhattan Project, and the Dreamweavers. And now the Gangsters of Christ are here in the finals. They're ready to take the titles. They're ready to take the trophy. And they're ready to take that prize money. The Malvados, you know, they got a first round by because they are the champions. The champions advantage, you get a first round by. But since then, they put down Tristan Slater and Mike Bain, a critical hit. Uh, so they have not had an easy road here, even as champions, with the first round by. It's not like they had a walk in the park to get here. So it's going to be a big match. Uh, it's going to be very hard to grade, I'm sure. I'm sure all these matches will be very hard to grade, honestly. Um, but it's the finals of the Sex Cups. I know both teams are going to bring it. It's going to be a huge final. Uh, Gangsters Christ weren't even in the Sex Cup last year. Malvados lost in the semifinals last year. Uh, so I know they're coming with a chip on their shoulder. They got a lot to prove. The Gangsters of Christ, they got a lot to prove too. Gangsters of Christ have tag team gold uh, and IIW. So, you know, they want to they wanna make their selves known too. They want to know, hey, we're no slotches. We didn't get here by accident. And Malvados want people to go, hey, we're the best tag team around. So it's going to be a big epic battle. 
And after that, brings us to our main event for the International Championship. Marcus Kadarian against Chronic Chris Page. This isn't the Chronic 2001. No, this is the Chronic Chris Page. And then international champion himself, the tactilizing Larry Tact. Uh, this will be a, a banger, too, man. I'm sure all these role players are going to be big. They're going to be good. I know they're all going to bring them. And it's also going to be fought in the confines of a steel cage. No mesh, chicken wire, chain link here. I'm talking thick, big, blue bars. And anybody that's ever had blue bars, you know how painful blue bars can be. You got blue bars, you just need some relief. You got all that tension built up. And the blue bars has got you. You guys are getting what I'm laying down there. But anyways, uh, man, honestly, I always thought the big blue cage made like that was super cool. Looks painful to get thrown into those. It's easier for big guys to climb to the top and jump off. Uh, but it's going to be big blue cage rules. You can escape to win. You can pin to win. You can submit someone to win. And it's going to be a three-way dance. And how funny is this? Retro Mania. Our second big pay-per-view of season two, triple threat cage match for the international title. And our first ever international title match was also in a steel cage. Now they didn't get big blue, they got the big mesh uh, chain link. I always say mesh, it's chain link. But it just looks like chicken coop wires, big brother. Uh, but, but the first one was between Xavier Lux, uh, Marcus Kadarian's good buddy, Peter Vaughn, CCPE member, and Drew Harkow. I'm probably saying his last name wrong. Uh, Drew Harkow. Uh, no relation to Larry Tag, so I guess I can't really draw a correlation there. But we got another three-way cage match for the international championship. So it's going to be very interesting to see who walks away with this one. I think we're going to have a lot of fun right now. Uh, it's probably going to get bloody. And uh, it's going to be a banger. I'm literally looking forward to Retromania. Uh, I'm recording. This is Tuesday morning. I start recording these on Monday morning normally. Uh, but like I said, it's busy. Didn't get it all recorded yesterday. And I already started typing out Retromania yesterday. Just working on the intro to the show. Trying to make it look nice. Give it a big feel. I uh, really hope you guys enjoy it. Should be a lot of fun. Looking forward to it. Uh, and I hope you guys are looking forward to it too. It's going to be a big show. Uh, the Thunder Pro will not be the same after it's over, man. Uh, the landscape will change. We may have new champions. We may have all the same champions. You know, but it's going to be a big show. Uh, it's going to you know, shape the future of Thunder Pro going forward. Hope you guys are looking forward to it as much as I am. Until then, I want to thank you for listening to me ramble, uh, listen to my terrible singing, listen to my bad jokes, uh, and man, just thank you guys for being part of Thunder Pro Wrestling. Also, I just want to thank everybody that was part of the Sex Cup. Uh, man, it turned out bigger than I thought it would. I'm super happy that it turned out with as many teams as it did. You know, we had 15 teams. That's awesome. Uh, I want to thank every 15 teams, two people per team. Think about it that way. It's 30 people. Uh, really appreciate you guys being a part of it. Appreciate you guys coming to Thunder Pro, even if it's for one, two matches, giving it a try, helping spread the name. Hope you guys had fun while you're here. I had fun with the tournament. Hope everybody has a great day. Looking forward to Retro Mania. Peace out.